in the last video we talked about uh, time dilation and how that's one of the strange effects of special relativity. In this video, I want to go over some of the other effects of special relativity, but I'm going to save all of the math details for another video and, and all of the derivations and just give you the basic, uh, basic concepts and basic uh, equations that you end up with after, after doing the slightly more complicated derivations. But I, I will do the derivations in a separate video for, for all of the math nerds out there. So the first concept that we want to look at is relativistic uh, Doppler shift. Relativistic Doppler shift. And this is something, Doppler shift is something that we, that we actually experience uh, fairly often. So let's say I have uh, some object that's emitting something, either it could be light or it could be sound waves, emit something with a given frequency. So it's emitting this wave uh, both forwards and backwards and it emits the same frequency in both directions. Now if that object is moving in a certain direction, so let's say we have we give this object some velocity. Well on the front side of it the waves are going to appear to be compressed together and shifted to a higher part of the spectrum. Well, the waves behind uh, pointing the other direction are going to appear to have a longer wavelength or a lower frequency. They're going to be red shifted when we're talking about light. And we see this every day, day whenever you hear a passing car when it's coming towards you, it appears to have a higher pitch to its engine than when it passes by and makes uh, a characteristic sound with that. And the same thing happens to light. So if we look at our space-time diagram, uh, so this will be a uh, time of A, so we have observer A and we have an observer B. Uh, time of B moving with respect to A, then let's say that A is going to shoot a beam of light with a certain frequency at, at a person B. So one wave front goes, one wave front uh, moves away from, from observer A towards observer B, and then a moment later the next wave front is going to go. And we can relate the time so we're going to call this delta capital T A. We can relate the time that it takes between uh, wave crests of that beam of light. Uh, the time it takes between emitting those beams is related to the frequency. So the frequency that A emits is going to be equal to 1 over delta T A. But B is going to have a different amount of time, delta T B, time in its frame that it observes the light, uh, the rate that the light crests are going towards it. And that's going to be, uh, uh, has the same form of an equation, delta T B, the, the time according to B. And we can relate this by frequency that, let me make sure I get this right, the frequency that B observes is going to be equal to 1 minus v over c, where v is the velocity of, of b moving with respect to a, over 1 plus v over c times the frequency according to the frequency according to, I got that wrong, the frequency according to a. So the frequency that b sees is going to be different than the frequency that a emits. And the interesting thing about this is this equation is different than what you get when you uh, when you do this classically. The derivation in special relativity gives you a different uh, factor that the frequency gets changed by, and that was actually a very good uh, observation, which showed that special relativity is actually correct. Now let's look at another uh, idea: composition of velocities, or how do we uh, add velocities. Let's say I had a person on a train. So here's my train and I have a person 
with uh, with a little gun. I'm a terrible drawer, so I'm just going to draw the gun, and they fire a bullet. And this gun fires a bullet at uh, VB when it fires from the gun, and the train is moving at, uh, we'll call it velocity of the train. So if I were standing on the ground, according to classical, uh, classical physics, the velocity that I'd see the bullet moving with, so velocity of the, the bullet for me, is clearly just going to be Vt plus Vb. But in special relativity, special relativity says that this answer is going to be wrong. The velocity that uh, that will be given through special relativity is the velocity of the bullet plus the velocity of the train over one plus the velocity of the bullet plus the velocity, sorry, not plus, uh, times the velocity of the train over c squared. Now, this is the term that is going to be different, and let's see what that does to, to our velocities. Well, let's say the train's moving at 90% 90, uh, 90 the speed of light, so Vt equals 0.9 times c. And let's say the bullet fires from a gun, fires from the gun also at 90% the speed of light. Well, according to classical mechanics, I would say, well, the person on the sidelines here should see the bullet going at faster than the speed of light, 1.8 times the speed of light, just the sum of these two. But this equation, if I look at this, this is going to give me uh, 0.9 plus 0.9 times c for the velocity of the bullet plus the velocity of the, of the train over 1 plus... Uh, 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 is 0 0.81 times c over times c squared over c squared, and these just cancel each other out. So that's going to give me in the numerator I have 1.8, in the denominator I have 1 plus 0 0.81, 1.81 times c, and this is going to be this quantity is less than the speed of light. Even if I'm adding two velocities that are going extremely fast, I'm still going to get a total answer that's less than the speed of light. So when we add velocities in special relativity, we need to take into account this factor as well. That's different from what we get in classical mechanics. Let's look at one more weird effect of, of special relativity. We've described how an observer A and an observer B, so let's draw observer B here, observer B, will have different ideas on what their x-axes look like, what they say are, are simultaneous. But not only do we have that, if I have a, a some object that's moving with respect to another object, there's going to be something occurring called length contraction. So let's say I have a, let's say I have two observers, a and a prime. So this is T a prime. That's his buddy that's standing at rest with respect to him. And let's say I have B and B prime. B and B prime aren't moving with respect to each other. So they just stay there. What if I were to ask both of them, what is the distance between B and B prime? Well, B and B prime are going to say this, this quantity here, let me do that in a slightly different color. This distance here is the length between them. So that's the length according to B. But A will say, no, you're measuring that at, at two different times. I'm going to say that and let me do this in a darker green, that this is the distance between you. So I'm going to call that LA, what A records as the distance between B and B prime. 
And according to special relativity, we can relate these two lengths by saying the length that A measures is going to be the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared times the length that B would measure. So if B says that they measure the distance between them to be one meter, then if they're moving with respect to A at this velocity, observer A is going to measure a shorter distance than observer B is going to measure. And this is completely different than what, what classical physics says. Classical physics would say the, the lengths shouldn't matter on who's observing them. But special relativity says something different. They say, if I have an object, let's say I have a sphere. So I'm going to make myself a, a sphere. And I move it in this direction with a given velocity. That sphere, in the direction that I'm moving, will appear compressed. It won't have any, any difference in this direction, but in the direction that it's moving, our lengths are going to compress. So this would be, uh, that would be in this picture LB, and this would be LA. A would see the ball being compressed. So those are a couple of different strange effects uh, from special relativity, and if you are interested in the, in the proof and the math details to this, I'll be doing that in a, in a separate video.